guys, Brandon from Bingo and Tools, aka BYOT. Thank you for joining me, and today, I have a rock wall that you literally can't even see because of the overgrown bushes that are on top of it. Yes, if you want to figure out how to change that rockery from this to this, keep on watching. Let's get started. As some of you already know, this is the front of my humble boat, but right adjacent to it is a bushel of bushes. Yes, bushel of bushes. And underneath this is actually a rock retaining wall. Yes, 50 years of neglect, this is what it looks like. Now let's clean this up. First tool that you must get is a reciprocating saw or a sawza, but in any case, that's actually a brand, so make sure you get one of these. It's a lifesaver in the long run. I first bring out my truck to the actual bushes itself. If you don't have a truck, you can always rent a dumpster and get it dropped off your location. Most cities have that service available. I first take my reciprocating saw and just start cutting away and hacking away at all these branches. It takes forever, especially when you literally have a jungle in your front yard. It has been neglected for a very long time, which is why Brent has wanted to do this project for so long. It just, you know, it's one of those last dying items that I have not accomplished on my house project as of yet, which is why I'm tackling it now. The nice thing is I even have some help from my beautiful, amazing wife. However, I don't know if that's actually how you use a Saza. You might be just a little too gentle with that, babe. It's a little too gentle. Yeah, you're adorable. I love you. Anyways, moving on. Now this did take us a couple of hours to clear out this entire area, but with the reciprocating saw's help, it took us much less time and look at the difference. My oh my. And yeah, my truck is buried. Now with the help of a ratchet strap, we were able to tie down all this material in a couple loads. Let's be honest, it did take a couple loads to do this. And it was not easy to compile all this material into a truck. Yeah, and the old adage of trying to shove 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag. Yeah, this is uh, basically it. Dear goodness, let's just be honest. I should have just rented a dumpster. It would have been a lot easier. In any case, moving on, next project. Drive to the dump, dump off all the material. Do that a couple times, get back and forth. And America, oh yeah. Next portion of the project, stump removal. Oh yeah, for the stump you're gonna need a farm jack, one eight foot two by four cut in half, a drill with one inch paddle bit, six inch bolt with washers and a nut, and a high strength wire rope with a couple end clamps. Go and lay the two by fours on top of each other and just drill into them, creating a hole at the very top that you can then put your through bolt through. Go and grab your bolt as well as your washers and your nut, Put one of the washers onto the actual bolt itself, then slip the bolt through the first stud, then hitting and going through the actual farm jack, and then finally into the final stud. Then put your washer and your bolt onto the other side, and boom, look at that. You have a tripod. Exactly like a tripod. Exactly. Anyways. Try and center it over the actual stump itself. Hopefully you're on pretty level ground when trying to do this, it makes it a lot easier. Wrap the steel rod around the stump and then splice it through into the farm jack at the top. Then all you have to do is clamp the wire rope together and start jacking. Yep, start jacking away. Now to be completely honest, this is probably the funnest portion of this entire project was jacking this thing out because in all reality, this thing was very easy to remove with this jack system. I was actually quite impressed and astonished about how easy it actually was to remove this. Unfortunately, not all the stumps were this easy. If they were only this easy, life would have been a lot better. Yeah, all you have to do, jack it out, move it, Get a sawzaw, cut off the last couple branches and root systems, and boom, you're done. That's it for this one. Before we tackle the next two stumps, I'm actually gonna start cleaning up this rock wall. I'm doing this due to the fact that these rocks have literally been neglected for 50 years, and the sediment of the dirt has actually come through the rocks itself. And you know what? It doesn't look like a beautiful rock retain wall. It looks like, eh, some rocks with a bunch of dirt inside, yeah. As you can see, this is what I'm talking about. Due to erosion over the years, the dirt itself is actually just pouring through the rock system and landing below. Now all I need to do is take a bucket and a small shovel and start shoveling out all this old dirt because I want to actually form this up and make it actually look presentable with new rocks that I'm going to be placing in it later on. Now as you're doing this, just remember that this doesn't have to be perfect. All you're trying to do is just clean it up and make sure you have a nice clean surface at the bottom so we can start stacking rocks and or concrete there. 
because you'll learn more about that here in momentarily. In any case, we start actually excavating all the area from top to bottom so we can get this entire area prepped and ready for the next portion of the project. But first off, we need to actually apparently cut a nice large root that's going from the top to the bottom. But guess what? It's no match for the reciprocating saw. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Also, ferns, not my favorite plant of all time, and not the easiest to get out in all reality. But guess what? It still is no match for the reciprocating saw. Yep. Cut it on both sides, and you are ready to rip this thing out of there. Yes. Goodbye. Woo! That was quite the eventful little weekend. Uh, yeah, especially when it's 90 degrees. But in any case, we did quite a lot. But on to the next day, since it's getting dark. Ah yes, back to my favorite portion of the project, stump removal. And unfortunately I can't actually use my farm jack system on this because it's on a ledge and I can't position it properly, so I'm using a nice link chain and my trusty truck and ripping it out of the rock wall. Yes. Maybe once? Nope. Twice? No? Three times? Come on. Four? Five? Yes. Finally. Thank you. That's what I get for having a four-cylinder truck. Oh well. On to the next stump. Now this massive behemoth can't be removed with my farm jack or my truck. So what I have to do, I have to resort to basically just use my brute force with a sledgehammer, an axe, and of course my trusty reciprocating saw. Now in all honesty, I'm quite happy with the fact that I was able to remove the stump the way I did. I would have had no other option other than just digging it out completely, which is the last thing I wanted to do with this type of root system, which is all over the place. So the fact that I was able to just remove it with brute force is perfect for me. Now after I have all the stumps completely removed and all the rocks looking pretty damn purdy, I actually hose off all the rocks just to give it a good final cleaning, trying to clean it as much as possible for applying the concrete that I'm going to be mixing up here shortly. But first, I need to find some rock. Yeah, some rock. It's going to be hard because of the fact that this rock is not very common these days and it's actually a fractured granite. I did quite a bit of digging trying to find this and lo and behold I took some valleys, some turns and I finally found a rock quarry that actually had the rock I was looking for. Pretty flippin' ridiculous that I actually found this in this random rock quarry that took me an hour to find but in any case I found it. Yay! Let's bring it home. My poor little truck was not meant to carry 2,000 pound loads as you can tell but guess what? I had to actually hand load this entire thing and then obviously hand unload it because of the fact that I'm building a rock wall so that was double the fun and just remember make sure to stretch when doing this you don't want to pull something slash screw up your back or anything so protect yourself trust me it's gonna help you in the long run before actually lifting these rocks, I'm actually going to mix up a few bags of concrete. As a quick side tip, make sure you pour some water in first prior to the actual cement bags because that will allow you to avoid lumps and it'll just make it easier for you, trust me. With a clean rock surface, I'm able to dump the actual concrete into place and then just form it and kind of mold it into position of where I want it to be. I then take the rock and actually place it on top of the wall itself and then try and maneuver some of the concrete in and out of the crack areas so I know I'm going to have a good adhesion overall. Now this doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be there so it actually is providing some support and hopefully it stays structural for years and years to come. Yeah, that would be nice. After I have all my large rocks into place, I then take small rocks and actually place it into the concrete itself that's actually visible. I want to cover that up as much as possible so it's nice and purdy for years and years to come. Now it doesn't have to be perfect again, but you know what, try and make it look as natural as possible and uh, use as many rocks as you need. Now for this retain wall, I'm actually increasing the height of it by placing rocks on top of the wall itself. I'm doing this because as you can see, the soil behind the retain wall is actually taller than the retain wall itself. Yeah, real smart. In any case, I wanted to actually level it out, which is why I'm putting large stones on top of it to try and do so. 
now and full disclosure you don't actually have to use concrete for this type of application I'm doing so because I want to make sure there's a nice firm support for these rocks as well as erosion control now you can fight erosion in a number of different ways but with this application I'm using the concrete as well as the rocks I picked up at the quarry to help fight back the erosion itself this will give the retain wall stability as well as a way to fight back the erosion itself you're not going to stop all of it because water will find its way through, but inevitably it will hold back the majority of the erosion itself. Now once I had my rocks in place and looking fabulous, I then proceeded to work on the top of the retain wall. Now you can't just leave it looking like this, yeah, we gotta get some greenery up in here, yeah. Just make sure it's straight and it's actually spaced properly and you actually maintain it. That'd be a good idea. Look at that. And I even had a nice little helper today. Yay, Michelle, you are a rock star. And once you have all your holes dug, go ahead and place some soil in the bottom of the hole itself and then place the plant in there. Go ahead and rough up the sides of the plant, make sure the actual root system is loose and ready to start pollinating the area, and you're ready to go. Go ahead and place some more soil in there, pack it in, make sure you water it properly, and hopefully it doesn't die in you. Yeah, nothing too crazy on this one. Now, these are actually called smoke bushes, which I'll leave a link in the description box below on where to find one. They're actually beautiful when they're fully grown. Now, I can't just leave it looking like this. I gotta get some bark. Yes, some beautiful bark to finally put the final finishing touch on this beautiful retain wall project. Now, a quick tip for people that have truck and actually going to one of these bulk material locations is that you actually fill up your truck first with buckets and then all the material gets poured into the buckets. Then you just take the buckets and you start spreading them out, not having to worry about trying to shovel it into the location. This makes it a lot easier and less heavy lifting and less headaches in the long run. And after all that hard work, you go from one crazy bushwhack system to, look at that, you can actually see a rock retain wall. That's pretty incredible, the vast improvement over what was existing there. Ah, oh, that is one beautiful, sexy beast of a retain wall. Oh yeah, look at that. Just so much better. Ugh. And there you have episode 29 of BOAT done. As you see, that was a vast improvement over what was there, and it didn't really cost that much, but you know what? It did take us some time and energy and some muscle. Yeah. Just keep that in mind. In any case, if you're watching, please like this video, please subscribe to this channel, and please check out my Instagram feed. I post there weekly, if not daily, on upcoming projects, so please check out that out. Thank you for your time. Catch you next time. Whoops!